So I want to talk to you about Lenz's Law, kind of in two parts. One is we'll talk about Lenz's Law, specific to just magnets. Yeah, just magnets and, and what's actually going on with the magnet and as far as Lenz's Law with the magnetic field that's going on there and the EMF that's produced. So the other second part of that is going to be about actually magnets or more so electromagnets and what Lenz's Law looks like in electromagnetics. First thing I think we should start with is the conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy can't be created or destroyed. You can't just make energy. With that concept, I want to kind of tell you a little bit of story. So here's story time about um, some friends that I had a conversation with about, hey, do you know what? Maybe we can generate free energy from a car going down the road. And this is what we imagined. So get this, imagine here's my big fat Lincoln going down the road and we put a trailer on the back of it and we designed this trailer on the back that the trailer itself has got this little generator on it and it's got some batteries in there. So and essentially the concept or, or the conversation was, okay, so your car's going down the road anyway, you might as well generate power from the car going down the road anyway. But essentially, because of Lenz's law, actually, specifically Lenz's law in here and the law of conservation of energy, it can't be done. In that, just because the car is going down the road anyway, you can't take energy from it. If I were to actually do this, it would work, it's just I'd burn more fuel. So take a look at this other situation that I have here, and that we've got this guy, okay? So there's Buddy and he's pushing this, there's a big heavy weight hanging, so, and he's pushing that weight. So the weight is just hanging there, I mean, there's no friction really for the, the ball, but the ball is actually there, it's a big heavy weight, and he's pushing it. However you look at it, if that ball is going to move, there has to be energy, there's the work being done, energy is being used. So actually converting one form of energy into another. So biochemical energy in your muscles into actual mechanical energy, your movement energy, and you put a kinetic energy into that ball. So I want to kind of go from this to this and then we'll jump into what's going on here. But let me just pause for a second. The reason that this doesn't work is because of Lenz's law, in that Lenz's law is taking place in here, and that the conservation of energy is taking place there, and we'll understand why this magnet, which is actually part of that generator, and that coil, which is inside that generator, actually create back forces. Yeah. So the back forces are also seen here, and this is something tangible you can wrap your head around. You understand that there's kind of back, if you push against that, so Newton's laws indicate to us that if we push on something, they actually push back with the same amount of energy. And that actually really boils down to the conservation of energy as well. So <clears throat> Let's now jump into my third example here, where we have a coil. Now, we understand Faraday's laws. If you don't get Faraday's laws, go back and just, just embrace Faraday's laws. Watch my video on that, or just learn that somewhere. Now, I will continue with Faraday's understanding. Okay, good. So, now I've got my magnet. It's a pretty cool magnet. So, if I take this magnet and throw it through my coil, what's going to happen is, I'm actually going to generate EMF, electromotor force, and because it's a closed circuit, I'm actually inducing current into the circuit. I'm making electrons physically move. So as I do this, as I force this through here, well, it's scratching my board, it's a strong magnet. As I force this through here, what's going on is it creates EMF, which actually creates, induces current. And this current is then gonna travel from here and it's gonna get forced into here. So I'm actually charging my battery. But wait a second, isn't that just free? I mean, think about it. If I were just to do this and move this magnet into there, all of a sudden these electrons move and they're being forced into there. But, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, there's no back force. It's just air. I mean, it's just a coil with air in it. If I take a magnet and I push it through the air, I mean, I have to spend a little energy moving the magnet back and forth, but, I mean, aren't I getting free energy just by making those electrons go? Well, the answer is no. And it's all about Lenz's law. So this is kind of where everything kind of turns. It's on this moment, just hold on to this. We know this. We know that if I put a changing magnetic field through a coil, Faraday's law says I generate induced current, no problem. But like when I do that, what happens is I'm also propagating a magnetic field. Huh. The induced current that I'm actually creating propagates a magnetic field and that's because of Faraday's laws. Actually it goes 
further back than that, but essentially Faraday talked about that as well, in that if I were to move this through here, I'm inducing current, but also this magnetic field that exists. The magnetic field propagates. It exists. And it just so happens that the magnetic field that is propagated because of the current that I'm creating because I'm moving this magnetic field is in opposition to this magnetic field. Or the polarity of that magnetic field is backwards to the polarity of this. So it's as if this thing turns into a magnet that has opposite polarity to this and it goes, no, 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 you can't come here. And it pushes back. There's actual physical force. So with that said and done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit of a situation where there, there is kind of a coil. I need you to wrap your head around this. Imagine if this was just a tube. Okay, so, and it wasn't connected to a battery, so it's just a tube, and I threw this through the tube, well, what would happen was current would exist in that tube if that tube was conductive. Current would exist in that tube, and it would turn and spin, and then that rotation of that current would actually generate a magnetic field, because the induced current does that, or any current moving generates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field would be in opposition. So essentially, even if this was just a tube, let's say it was just like floating in space, and my hand was pretty strong, and I moved it, the tube would actually move away. Yeah, check this out. So what's going on here is that I've got a little magnet on the end of that screwdriver, and that's just a piece of brass, and brass is not magnetic. But, as you can see, when the magnet moves in, it actually has this back force. It, it's interacting with that tube. Dude, that's so cool. It's, it lenses, this is Lenz's Law in action. This is what's going on. There are eddy currents that are being produced in there, and those eddy currents are producing a magnetic field that is in opposition to the magnetic field of the magnet. And they're moving. Now, the other thing is that when the magnet moves out, it also creates a magnetic field that is actually pulling the magnet back in. So that tube moving one way and the other was really cool to see that. And that's, that's what's going on. That's Lenz's law as far as magnetism goes. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna step into the concept of Lenz's law being seen in electromagnetism in actual this situation here. And what would actually be going on here, especially if our magnetic field was changing one way and the other and back and forth, and why would we have a magnetic field changing back and forth? Well, I mean, I could do this, or I could use another thing to generate a magnetic field that oscillates. And that's actually oscillating current. Yeah. So in AC, what happens is because we have oscillating current going back and forth and back and forth, it actually generates a magnetic field this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way, so we're constantly having a magnetic field that changes. Again, going back to Lenz's law, we've got this coil. We've got current going through the coil. Now we've got this magnetic field entering into this coil. And the fact is, because of that magnetic field entering into the coil, as Lenz's law says, it actually produces back EMF in a way that's going to try and then generate a magnetic field that would actually be opposite to the magnetic field that's being propagated in the first place that actually adds this back EMF. Yeah, that EMF that's produced by that changing magnetic field is in opposition to the current that's making the field in the first place. Did that make sense? Yeah, so Lenz's law with electromagnetics goes a little bit more than just this magnet moving. And really, you can just base it on this. As opposed to imagining Lenz's law with a magnet moving back and forth, just say, well, the magnetic field that's actually being changing or that's propagating, that's in dynamic in the coil, comes from the current going through the coil. So what happens is actually there's this back EMF, we call it, and the back EMF doesn't actually make the current go the other way. It just kind of slows the current down or adds some resistance. Yeah, and when we have AC, that's called reactance. So as far as Lenz's law goes, and the law of conservation of energy, and why this actually burns more fuel generating electricity, and it's not free energy just pulling a trailer because the car is moving anyway, it boils down to this being a generator, which is actually made up of coils, 
and magnets that move back and forth. So just imagine a basic generator, we don't have to get into generators, but essentially if you boil it down, what it is really is it's a mechanical motion that's actually making a magnet go back and forth in here. And when we go back and forth, we're actually creating that EMF and we're creating the, the current and that current that goes in here and forces the electrons to go in there and charges the battery, that's fine. But we know because of Lenz's law that it actually takes energy to push that in there. Now a generator, this it's just like this thing on steroids, it's a big huge coil and it's designed and built in a way that it actually it, it has back force. Yeah, that is going on in the generator. The fact that you can feel that big ball when you push it. So what's happening is that back force from that magnet moving, which is really the mechanical motion of the magnet, is actually the spinning wheel. That back force is trying to slow that wheel down. It's like putting a brake on the wheel. So that back force, that energy, every ounce of energy, because energy is measured in ounces, every joule of energy that's going into there actually is coming from the wheel itself. And there's some inefficiency there as well. So that's why that doesn't work. Okay, so let's look at this in application and more practically. So I want to show you Lenz's Law in action. We've got a kind of a cool pipe here, so we're going to see Lenz's Law kind of working backwards in action. But just to remind you what Lenz's Law is, Lenz's Law is that concept where there's kind of, there's a kind of fight going on. Yeah, that, that we have this voltage, sorry, we have this current that's going down through a conductor. So that current going through the doctor is creating a magnetic field. So when the current's not there, there's no magnetic field. But when the current starts to go, the magnetic field propagates. Imagine that is the wire. So the magnetic field is just not, imagine my hand is not there. And all of a sudden, current goes through my hand just starts like this. Magnetic field starts to expand and it starts to exist. So when it's existing, it's actually in dynamic. It's moving. So there's a changing magnetic field in the presence of a conductor. Well, wait a second. Doesn't Faraday's law say that when we have a changing magnetic field in the presence of a conductor, then there's EMF produced? Yeah. So, but the thing is, it's actually back EMF. Yeah. So Lenz's law is this, where the current that's actually producing the magnetic field produces a changing magnetic field such that that changing magnetic field actually induces voltage, which we call EMF, that actually tries to make the current go that way. It's backwards. So that's Lenz's law. And it's a huge part of electronics. It, it's huge. Actually, it creates something called reactants in AC circuits. And also it creates a real problem for things that anything that has a coil in it. So it's kind of the bane of the coil. Yeah, Lenz's law. So let's actually take a look at it in action with this pipe. Now, get this. I have this copper pipe. Really, there's nothing in it. I don't know. Can you see anything in it? There's no, no it's empty. Okay, so I've got this magnet. So I'm just going to drop this magnet down here. Can I watch this? Ready? I'm going to drop it down here. What's going It's actually just so cool. Let's do it. Is it, oh, did, oh, what happened to the, where, where did it go? It's still falling. It's actually still falling. And here it comes. It's going to go. And then, oh, yeah. So what happens? It's so cool. The, oh, I dropped it. The, the magnet is starting to fall down here. I'll get the magnet. What's actually happening is this magnet, as it's falling down here, this is creating a changing magnetic field relevant to any point in this copper pipe. So therefore there's current. The current that's in the copper pipe, well, it's a current in a conductor. Doesn't a current in a conductor produce magnetic fields? Well, yeah. And it just so happens that the magnetic field that the current in this conductor is producing is opposite to the magnetic field of this. Yeah, that's why it falls. So this is falling, it's creating currents. That current is creating a magnetic field that is in opposition to the magnet falling, and that's why it falls really slowly. So, there you go. So let's actually take a look at it in a coil and see what happens. Lenz's law has its greatest effect on anything with a coil in it. Because the coil produces a magnetic field. So imagine a magnetic field being propagating, and you know that if I take a motor or a solenoid or anything, let's just take a look at this solenoid. So as I'm putting current through here, there's this magnetic field that's propagating, and that magnetic field actually goes through the coil itself. Well, we know that a changing magnetic field in the presence of a coil creates EMF. So and that EMF is in opposition to the current that's creating the magnetic field in the first place. And we end up seeing that kind of as resistance. Now there's actually a special word for it, but it does resist the current. 
Now, I have to tell you about AC, or I think you know about AC, but more specifically that, you know, we don't see Lenz's Law being a real big issue with DC. It's mostly in AC. I mean, it's huge with AC. And the reason is because the magnetic field is constantly changing. So what I've got here is an example where I've got this solenoid here. This is actually a DC solenoid, but I can still run it on AC. It's running on 10 hertz right now, and I've got it kind of shuddering a little bit. Even though it's a DC coil, it's just a coil. I can run it on AC if I want. So I'm actually running it from my function generator, and right now I'm studying the voltage drop across it and the current going through it. So if we take a look at this current, we've got 30 milliamps of current going through here, and we know that our frequency is 10 hertz. I'm just going to kick it up to 100 hertz and see what happens. And you'll see that the reactance, yeah, that's the resistance to the current because of Lenz's law. It's that back EMF saying, no, 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 you can't come this way. So it's pushing against the, the voltage that's pushing it. It's pushing against the current. That's actually the polarity of the voltage that's produced by the Lenz's law in this coil is in opposition. It's opposite to the polarity of the voltage that's actually producing the magnetic field. So let's take a look. I'm going to kick this up to 100 and watch the current. Oh, the current just went down. Yeah, it's because the magnetic field started changing a lot, like 10 times more. So because it's changing a lot more, there's Lenz's law jumps into play and it's actually 10 times more powerful. So therefore it's resisting the current even more. So therefore it's like a resistor or specifically we call it reactance. So that guy is now seven. Let's kick it up to a hundred or a hundred K. Well, look at that. It's like really close. It's like 0.8 and this, this thing's just not working anymore. So the problem is the higher the frequency, the greater the reactance. So it would be nice if we could just use a really low frequency for AC, especially for driving something that has power. And, oh yeah, we do do that. Let's put this down to 60 hertz. All right, well, 30, it's half anyway. So as we can see, the current's gone up a little bit. It's actually gone up a lot. And actually, let me just kick it down to 60. So we're looking at 60 hertz. And that's why our power system actually runs on 60 hertz. And over in Europe, it runs on 50 hertz, which is better for them. We use 60, and I think it's fine as well. I think we use 60 because it's just a cooler number. So as we increase to 60 from 30, we can see the current's gone down. So Lenz's Law plays havoc with AC. I think we're good.